Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Ryder. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. Great with flying. But these little shuttles are the worst. You don't like flying. And yet, you joined Starfleet. There's a reason I'm not a pilot. You should try it sometime. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Chara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the exo this ship needs right now. Starbase on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class, I, I mean all time, in the history of the Academy. So, there's that. Simulations are great for training, but they're not quite the same as the real thing. That's fair. I guess I'm about to find out. Please place your hand here. 
Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... It, it, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. The pleasure is mine. Ensign... Uh, Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a Bolian, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Excuse me, have you seen a Bolian around here? Yes, sir. Right back there, near the replicator. Ah, there he is. Thank you. Happy to help, Commander. Excuse me. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydek. I'm Commander Jan Ermot, Operations Officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It was perfectly fine. No trouble at all. I'm glad to hear it. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. You can spare me the flattery, Mr. Ermot. I'm here to work. Duly noted. I'll uh, stick to the matter at hand. SS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but... It was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. That's what it means to be a crew. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. Did you lose anyone close to you? Too many. 
And to that I'll just say, you have big shoes to fill. Listen, I realize you've known Captain Solana for quite some time, and I'm sure you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the Captain announced you would be the new First Officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. All due respect to anyone that feels that way, they're gonna have to get over it. I'm here, and I have a job to do, just like anyone else. That's true, but I wouldn't say it like that. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the Captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. that. I thought that thing was totally fried. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Nelly. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. Sense in zero G. Carter Welcome. Diaz. So clean, I can see myself. Then you know what? Not half bad. Engineer. 
I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. Ah, uh, what's the matter, Nilly? Afraid of a little hard work? A little hard work? Really? A little? Six months of putting this ship back together is a lot of hard work. Yeah, and here we are. Just about ready to go. Looks like we got here before... Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty Officers Ed Salar. Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Edzelar on repeated occasions. Uh, apologies for the delay, Commander. I do not want your apologies. Simply see to it that it does not happen again. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. Commander, if this energy storm is causing problems here at Space Dock, what does that say about what we're going to find when we head out there for real? Shouldn't we let this storm pass? Long-range sensors show that conditions will indeed be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. Thusly, we are taking all necessary precautions. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander Chovak. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chovok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Consequences be damned. You won't get an argument from me, Nilly. Sure seems like everyone's still scrambling. And I get it. When has a relaunch ever gone off without a hitch? But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. Huh. Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Oh, hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm gonna take the high road here, pretend you didn't say that, and welcome you aboard. He's a better diplomat than I am. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa! Good to go. See you on the other side. Activating magnetic souls.
Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Doridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Doridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the Replicator. I can't believe he keeps this around. Don't even know where mine is. We'll be out there soon. Going where no one has gone before. He's still got a thing for trains. The warp engines of their day, apparently. The first mineral Captain Solano ever discovered. Always was the nostalgic type. Can't wait to plot a course myself. Just a sip of something. Ah, <sighs> that's lovely. Jara Rydek. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrid Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. My only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But, unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. You can spare me the pomp and circumstance. There's plenty of work to be done without all that. You always had a work ethic like nothing I'd ever seen. That's just what this ship needs at the moment. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. You'll have to forgive me. I don't really know the details. Starfleet has been kind enough to keep the story contained. Probably because they want to protect me. But I don't mind telling you. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there. Within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. <sighs> it was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make. And I have to live with the consequences. You're being too hard on yourself. It wasn't your fault. It's not a question of blame. It's about responsibility. No matter what the circumstances. In my defense, I will say... 
I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO, and I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission? I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. Starfleet hasn't said. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying, you have my full support. It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydek, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydek, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time, and I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. 
Not that I've done anything close to what you've done. But you definitely set a standard to strive for. That's very kind of you to say, but... Enough about me. We have a lot of work to do. Oh, yes, of course. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. Have an urgent meeting with the Starbase Commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field, now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. Storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. I am more than that. And so are you. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Beginning recalibration. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, 
is an odd choice for First Officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario, but not outside the realm of possibility. Captain Solano's familiar with my condition. I'm sure it factored into his decision, so I'd have to say it's not a problem. But we should probably have a contingency plan just in case. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. Mr. Westbrook, if you have some kind of problem with me, and you just met me so it has nothing to do with me, you're gonna have to figure out how to get over it. Because I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. Do you read me? Loud and clear. I'll stick to science. That is what this ship is for. Very well. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. We've got a massive energy wave inbound, on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide-band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the... Red alert! Aye. <coughs> Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. Bedrosian, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Heading locked. Raise shields. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. radiation supercharged the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one fail-safe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown.
Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. to Resolute. The fail-safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but you know. time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Chola can... That other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. All right, Starbase. We're on it. Acknowledged. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull. 
which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Jara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? We're going to blow the bolts. Starbase, stand by. We'll warn our crew to take cover. Get it done, Rydek. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, you have more micro debris incoming. Find cover. Cover? Nilly, get under the access panel. It's armored with duranium. But what about you? Carter, maybe we can both fit behind this. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. We're going there now. I'm at the auxiliary hatch. Willkommen 